everybody! I am so excited to be with you on this day that the Lord has made. And this day is a special day of celebration for the church. We are celebrating the church's 40th birthday, our church, the church you go to. And it's a great day of excitement. So we are going to go through Revelation chapter 1 verses 9 through 19. And we are going to look in these verses to see how Jesus loves the church, how Jesus loves John, and how because of how he loves John, we know he loves us that way too. And we are also going to look um, at a very great picture that is painted of Jesus and his power and his authority. So for that part later, you are going to need to go right now and get some crayons and some paper. Any crayons, any paper, it will do. And I am going to pause and I'll be right here waiting for you to come back. And my favorite thing is to pause people having a funny look on their face. So I'm gonna supply you with a funny look and you can pause whenever you like. Okay, are you back? All right, I'm back. Did you see me go? I went and got mine. Oh, you actually know I already had mine, don't you? Okay, let's start these verses and see what we can find out. Verse nine starts off with, I, John, am your brother and partner in suffering and in God's kingdom and in the patient endurance to which Jesus calls us. I was exiled to the island of Patmos for preaching the word of God and for my testimony about Jesus. So John is alone and he's in prison because of his testimony and his preaching about Jesus. Let's see what happens. So Jesus comes to Paul and it says, I was the Lord, I, it was the Lord's day and I was worshiping in the spirit. So, so in the spirit means that Jesus gave John the special time of seeing something that he wanted John to see specifically. So it's kind of like Jesus gave John a movie that he saw in his mind and, and John knew that it was from Jesus. And in this, and, uh, and on the Lord's day, that's the special day that he had set aside to worship uh, Jesus. So what day do you set aside a special to worship Jesus? Maybe Sunday? Maybe Saturday? Every day should have a special time that we worship Jesus in just a normal day. But then we take certain days of the week, and we might call those our Sabbath, um, our special day of worship. But that's what he means when he says the Lord's day. It was the Lord's day. And suddenly, John says, suddenly, I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet blast. And do you know whose voice that was? That voice was Jesus. Jesus coming directly to John when he was alone and maybe a little afraid and feeling like, D -d -d does what I'm doing matter? And Jesus says, yes, what you're doing matters so much. And I'm going to show you a little bit more than you know now. And, and did you hear the loud voice like a trumpet? Why would John say that Jesus's voice sounded loud like a trumpet blast? Tell me what you think that Jesus's voice would sound like. I want to hear it right now. What do you think? Yeah, all right. I hear that. Trumpet, trumpet blast. Why do you think trumpet blast? So then Jesus's voice said, now we're in uh, verse 11, if you're following along. It said, Jesus' Jesus's voice said, write in a book everything you see and send it to the seven churches in the cities of Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. So I know I'm not writing like the word of God, but I kind of know what it feels like to want to write something down and not forget any words. So that's why sometimes when I'm doing my message, I read what I've written because I don't wanna miss any of the words. And so Jesus was telling John that that's how important what you're, what's about to happen to you is so important that it has to be written down because it's going to be delivered to seven churches. And then now we're starting into the vision. So now we're starting to vision, into the vision. Now, uh, verse 12. When I turned to see who was speaking to me. So John really felt like Jesus was with him. And it's so important. Jesus is showing John that he cares about each church 
And here I'm going to read this part because I think it's important. So we can see in all the books of the New Testament that God takes special care to communicate to all people. He has specific words of encouragement that might be for different people at different times or different churches at different times. So look at our church. Look at our pastors and our leaders and everybody who attends our church. Look at you. Look at yourself and the family you're with. God has placed us all right here, right now, for his purposes, and so that we can be together. It's not an accident that we are all together. It's not something that just happened. It's something on purpose. So God has a reason. We will listen and he will tell us what we should do. How does he tell us? Well, when we pray, when we read the Bible, sometimes he'll walk he'll talk to us through our parents or our friends or our leaders our pastors and when we are quiet with him he might give us inspiration and things to think about and when we are playing or being rowdy god might inspire us to do something or to go to someone that we should talk to the important thing to know is that jesus does speak to us we are never alone sometimes we may have to fight and, and work so hard to hear it. Sometimes we may not want to hear it. And these are all okay because he is with us no matter what. The important thing is to constantly remind yourself that no matter what you're feeling, that he is with you and he will wait for you and he will be patient for whatever needs to happen. So don't ever despair in any of that. So um, now we are moving on into verse 13. John says, I saw seven gold lampstands and standing in the middle of the lampstands was someone like the Son of Man. Again, that's Jesus. The lampstands are the churches. So there's seven of them specifically at this time because there were seven letters that were going to go out. But the important thing for you to see is that Jesus is in the midst of the lampstands. He's caring for the lampstands. He's making sure that they're always ready to deliver the light that he has for them to deliver. And the light that the lampstands are delivering are the light from Jesus from Jesus himself is the light that he gives to the churches. Okay, now it's time for us to do our drawing. So I'm going to read through. So don't worry about looking at me right now necessarily because we'll be working through our picture. So heads down, get your crayons out and let's draw what we um, see in these next few verses. Okay, um, so the first thing that we see, John says, Jesus was wearing a long robe with a gold sash across his chest. So draw a long robe. Um, it's kind of like the choir robes that you see. And, and again, there is no perfection here. There's no judging. Just draw some sort of a robe with some arms flowing and then it you know, comes down and it goes long to the floor maybe. Then when you get your um, robe drawn, then like a yellow or a gold or something, a sash that goes all the way across. You can draw that. You can always rewind it and draw it again. You can get your, your family to draw it with you. Okay, so Jesus, and what this signifies is that Jesus is the head pastor and he's the priest of all. Um, all the churches that were now, all the churches that were in the past, and all the churches that will come. It doesn't matter where you're meeting. So Jesus is with every church. Where are you right now? You have church in your home. Jesus is with you. He's meeting with you right now. Okay, what's next? His head and his hair were white like wool, white as snow. So now you get to um, pick a crayon and draw the head of Jesus on top of the robe. And then on his head, he's got white, snow colored hair and you might not be able to see this very well when I show you my picture later but it's here I'm doing white snow colored hair and I maybe put like some silver in it to make it shimmer a little bit okay get your white hair you can do goldish hair yellowish hair something that's kind of white makes you see like snow and you can have any kind of crazy hair that you want to so Jesus, so this shows us, Jesus has been with God forever. Jesus has always existed. So he is, if you wanna talk about age, but he doesn't have age, which is kind of silly to think that he's old, but then he doesn't really have age because he never was born, but he has wisdom. 
So he has the wisdom that comes with age and he has the answer to all the questions, all of them. So I want you to tell me right now, what is the most difficult question you can ask that you think nobody knows the answer to? Ask me, what is it? What is the hardest question in your world right now? Hard question, nobody knows the answer to. Think about it. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that question, but you know who does? Jesus, Jesus knows. And the, the part that says he's as pure as snow reminds us that he um, took the sins of the entire world upon himself and he had no sin. So his pure heart and his pure love is the whitest snow. And we'll talk more about that later. Okay, here's a great one. His eyes were like flames of fire. So draw some eyes on Jesus and they can be flaming. Like sometimes fire is, is, sometimes fire is so hot that it's purple, or you might think that it's so hot that it's orange, whatever color, or blue even, whatever color you think of when eyes are flaming. And this tells us that Jesus is the only perfect judge. He knows right and wrong. He has the authority to tell us when we are right and when we are wrong. He has that authority. Okay, his feet, we're gonna draw the feet of Jesus now. His feet were like polished bronze, refined in a furnace. So draw some bronze feet, some nice, big, strong feet of Jesus. And this talks about when Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and he took the sins of the entire world upon himself, he, um, he took the sins of the people who lived before you, your sins, and the people who have the, and the sins of the people who are living now, and the sins of the people who haven't even been born yet, who will be born after you. He took all of their sins upon himself, and he suffered the punishment, but because he himself never sinned, he did not die. The punishment did not kill him, so he lived through it, and that's what his strong, wonderful feet that have been through the fire and not been burned and become just completely strong and bronze throughout the process, that's what these feet show us. And his voice thundered like mighty ocean waves. So you know the cartoon people when they speak and there's this bubble that comes out of their mouth? So draw a, a big word bubble and draw some ocean waves, some water in that bubble. And yours can be big waves, little waves, whatever kinds of waves you want to. His voice has authority, the power and the majesty of the true king. So we can trust this voice that comes out of Jesus. And in his hand, he held seven stars, seven stars in his right hand. So you can draw some stars in his right hand and you can draw seven of them, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I just drew mine in my left hand. So if you did that, it's okay. Um, these are the leaders of the churches. So you, when you see these stars, you can remember to pray for the leaders of all of the churches. Okay, and this is a great picture. A sharp two-edged sword came out of his mouth. And this doesn't necessarily mean that Jesus is like spouting super sharp things out of his mouth. It's just like the waves that Jesus's voice sounded like. It doesn't mean Jesus opened his mouth and waves came out, right? But John knows that the words Jesus speak are the words of God, God's word, and that will cut through anything. So that is what his most powerful weapon is, are the words of God. And that's why it's like a sword coming out of his mouth. So in the same bubble where you, or you can draw a new bubble if you want to, but in the same bubble where you drew the water, you could draw a awesome big sword that's coming out and this is a sword of protection for you for the church for all of the people for everybody it's a sword of protection and then you can get another yellow or something next or another blue or something like that because the last part of this is and his face was like the sun in all of its brilliance so you can have his face shining and you can have more shining coming out around his hair, however you want to draw the face of Jesus shining. And then um, we haven't drawn it yet, but I think Jesus would be smiling. So I'm gonna draw a nice smile on Jesus. 
and that's where his words are coming out of. Okay, you ready? Let's show each other our pictures. I'm gonna show you mine. Okay, here's my picture. Here's my picture of Jesus. And you can draw this again. Jesus gives us pictures so we can see and know and understand all of these things better. See if you can remember, why are all of these things this way? Tell your parents, tell somebody who wasn't there with you today. Use this picture to tell them about Jesus. And the most important thing, please send me pictures of your picture. I really love to see what you guys are doing at home. It makes me super happy. Okay, here's a final challenge to you. In church today, we're gonna to be playing four or five games that link up to this picture that we drew. So, um, so like for instance, the one with the feet, we're gonna have people have bronze feet that can't move and are super strong, and they're gonna be holding buckets, and people are gonna to have to bounce balls into their buckets, and the people, you, you can't move your feet. So you're gonna go side to side, trying to help the person bounce balls into your bucket. So I challenge you to go and make yourself some carnival games based on what you now know about Jesus, or just some things that remind you of your favorite stories in the Bible. And you know what you could do? You could set them out in your front yard and invite some of your neighbors or your friends to come over and play them with you. So there's your challenge. All right, now I'm going to switch to the next page and I want you to join me in prayer. And this is the last part of um, chapter one in verses 17 and 18. That's what we're gonna pray right now. So join me um, as we pray. Lord God, we see you and we want to worship you and we fall at your feet. We feel you as you lay your hand upon us and you say, don't be afraid. Believe in me. I am who I say I am. I am the first and I am the last. Lord God, we thank you for being the living one. We thank you for dying for us. We thank you that now we can look upon you and you are alive forever and ever. Thank you that you alone hold the keys to death and the grave and that you alone have the power to save us and give us the wonderful pictures to see your saving mercy and your saving grace. We love you, Lord. We ask you to bless our week and help us to know what carnival games and who to invite to play these carnival games. In your wonderful name we pray, amen. Okay, I want you guys to each have a great week. I love you. Be a blessing to others and don't forget to let Jesus bless you too.